Hey, it's Jason Creel. You know, there's something I have learned of being in the lawn care business is that yes, you, you've got to know how to, how to perform lawn work and that's a big part of it. But uh, as I've been told and has found out to be true that when you're in the lawn business or in any business for that matter, uh, you're in the people business. What I've also learned is it's hard to, uh, to judge people and to figure out who's going to pay, who's not going to pay. Some of the people who I think in, in my mind, I might be questioning, you know, whether this is going to be a good customer or not, turn out to be some of my best customers and some of the wealthy clients who I think, you know, of course they'll pay are the ones who end up, I have trouble getting the money from them. So, um, it's hard to categorize people, but what I want to talk about in this video is I think uh, that I have, through my own observation and experience in this business, narrowed down one category of people that seem to give me the most trouble. And I was wondering if it's the same for you, and you can tell me in the comments. But, uh, and the category may surprise you a little bit, okay? It's not on, based on income or, or anything like that, but it is actually based on their age. And the category I'm talking about is old. Old people, uh, let me stop myself and just go ahead and start by saying some of my best customers are old. And when I say an old, I'm talking most times 70 and older. I'm not, you know, uh, and some of them are the sweetest, nicest, pay on time, never late on a bill ever, just complimentary customers I have. And yet, if I think back, some of my most difficult customers have been ones that are sure enough elderly, okay? So let me give you a couple of stories to illustrate. One, and this is what brought this to my mind. Yesterday, I got, I got fired by a old customer, okay? old as in not he was old age-wise not old to my business matter of fact <clears throat> I, you know do a weed control fertilization i've only done one treatment on his yard so i pull up yesterday for the second treatment pull up at his house he's uh pulling in the garage there and i'm i pull up the curve you know i'm maybe 100 feet away from him pull up his yard looks virtually perfect virtually perfect i'd say definitely in the top five percent of my lawns that i take care of and i think well that's good you know and i could tell when i talked to him the first time this guy was particular you know one of those guys that he trims the, the hedges have not had one leaf out of place in like five straight years you know trims your hedges once a week just these little tight shaped hedges that never get out of place you know his yard been fresh and mowed i didn't see a single weed i pull up get out of the car he yells from the garage he's like don't spray the weeds and i thought maybe he thinks it doesn't need it you know it, it looks so good it doesn't need it you know it, well i was quickly corrected he said don't spray the weeds you're not killing the weeds i'm killing the weeds and uh, i thought oh okay uh you're killing the weeds huh and so um and it, so he started walking in the garage. I said, okay, you, you want me to come back? He said, no, walked away. I said, all righty. And so I uh, get back in the car, mark him off my list. And I, listen, I, the guy's yard looked perfect. His hedges looked perfect. His grass looked perfect. I, I didn't see a one flaw. And maybe he's saying he's the one making it look perfect. I don't know. But, you know, clear, the guy's expectations are out of, you know, uh, you, you can't please people like that and I and I don't try not to let that bother me too bad but I, I thought about it and it got me thinking back of other customers that I had who give me a hard time and so many of them are old man I had a guy last year 92 years old World War II veteran I believe now 92 years old okay and matter of fact he might have turned 93 while I was cutting his grass so I would go I was cutting his grass and doing his weed control fertilization tiny yard I'd go there every two weeks mow his grass paid me on the spot every time I'd ring the doorbell I'm thinking he's 92 he has like a live-in not a live-in but like a, a nurse lady that comes and stays with him every day and 
he'd come to the door, you know, with a walker or a cane, and I'd try to talk to him. I think he's 92. He's probably lonely, you know. And he's all, he'd be watching baseball. I'd ask him about the game, shoot the breeze with him, whatever. Never any trouble. Always pay me. Well, you know, and I'm doing these six applications, weed control, cutting his grass. One time, he had he had about a 15 foot four by four post laid down behind his fence with a bird. Uh, birdhouse on it, bird feed or something, I think birdhouse, so, and it was laid over, you know, and he asked me about it, you know, and I, I, and I was at the time, didn't have a lot going, I said, you know, I, I, I'll take care of that for you, I went and got a bag of cement, dug a hole, put a bag of cement in there, stood it back up, and, uh, and didn't charge him, you know, he went, I said, no, don't worry about that, I'm, I'm happy to do that, yeah, well, anyway, I, you know, our relationship goes on, I'm cutting his grass throughout the year, but it gets to the winter time, Okay, I'm not cutting his grass anymore, but of the six lawn applications I'm doing, there's some that require in the winter. And I can't remember if it was the winter lime application I do or if it was in the in like January when I come do the first round of pre-emergence. But anyway, I showed up one day um, and did the lawn treatment, go knock on his door because he always liked to pay on the spot. And he lit into me about, about showing up in the winter time on his yard and told me don't come back until march or april i forget what he said and uh you know and, and it's what we i mean anyway we had agreed to do six applications these are six applications these are what i do for all my customers you know or 95 percent of them at least and um but anyway i he i don't remember if he paid me or not i can't remember i think he did but he told me don't come back and i went home thought about it I, and that's why i wrote him a letter it's actually the letter that's in the the letters package that i sell on my website but i i wrote him a letter i typed it up and sent it to him just told him you know i i i for me i just got i said man i you know it's not about that but i i put the guy's bird post up for free i had done some other stuff to help him out and that sort of thing and i he, the way he talked to me bothered me so i just wrote him a letter and told him yeah you know, i thought best we part ways and i i called a friend of mine who mowed grass i said hey i got a guy he always pays you know i said but he, he kind of got on me about spray his yard but if you just want to cut his grass i think he'll be fine well anyway so i said would you mind if i put your name on this letter as somebody i could recommend to mow sure enough the next spring comes around he calls my buddy up hires him to start cutting his grass gets on into the summer and asked my friend to trim his hedges my friend trims his hedges charged him like thirty dollars i mean very little amount the guy jumps on him about charging him saying that somebody in the past had done it for free and he didn't want to have to pay extra to have his hedges trimmed and so he fired him, you know, and we just laughed about it. So man, this guy and the, the, the home uh, nurse lady told me, said, believe me, he's got plenty of money. It wasn't a money thing, you know, but it's 92, 93 years old and just ornery. I, I don't know. I th when I get old, I might be ornery. I don't know. I, I think sometimes they, you know, like the, the first guys, like they walk their mailbox every day if they see one blade of grass out of place it just it just eats at them you know that anyway and the opposite being you have a young family a working husband a working wife two kids they're busy you know running around all the time they don't have time to complain about one blade of grass being out of place you know you it's just but when you're old and you don't have anything going on i don't know it, it's just but and then uh, one more story I remember back in my early days, we had this old lady retired, bagging her grass, big yard, gave her a good price. Almost every time we go, we would laugh about my crew would laugh. She would have a handwritten full page letter out, a uh, piece of paper taped to the door with all the stuff we did wrong the, the week before we need to fix this time picking up little twigs that had fallen from this huge tree in her yard, bagging her grass. You didn't weed eat far enough on this side of the fence. Can you do this a little better, that a little better? You missed this spot. And I'm thinking, we're taking all this extra time. Sure enough, she fired us that fall, you know, and it's the same, I said, that it, it brought me back to this point that Sometimes people have this mentality that the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And so if they sit there and complain about every little thing that they can just wear you out and get you to do a bunch of extra. And I think what we need to do as lawn business people, you perform your work to, to a standard. The standard is excellence. 
Okay, we don't slouch the standard. But I don't necessarily raise the standard because you complain and whine all the time. You know what I'm saying? The standard is excellence. I will treat the customer with respect. I will show up when I say I will, and I will do an excellent job. And if you call with a legitimate complaint, I'll come out and address the complaint and try to fix it to the best of my ability. That's the standard. And 98% of people find that to be an acceptable standard. The 2% who don't, you're not going to please them. You're not going to please them and quit trying. You know, that's what I'm saying. You, I go this extra effort to try to make these people happy. They end up firing you anyway. Say, this is, this is how we do things. We show up on time. We treat every customer with respect. We perform excellent service. And if there's a legitimate complaint, we try to deal with it as quickly as possible to make you happy. But that, that, that is the standard. And if your standard is... Yes, but can you also do this, 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 trim my hedges for free, quit doing that, start doing this. Can you come up and hang a picture on my wall? And I've had them ask me to do that. I've, I've, I went inside somebody's house and hung a picture up while I was supposed to be cutting their grass. I mean, it gets ridiculous sometimes. So stay to your standard, focus on your standard, and just understand that for some people, and some of them are old, the standard is not going to be good enough and you just move on and accept that that is part of the business. Unfortunately, that's part of the business. But fortunately, if you stay to that excellent standard, the vast overwhelming majority of people are happy with it, compliment you on your work, and are thrilled to have you working on their lawn. The same thing is true even on YouTube. I, I produce these videos or whatever. 98% of the comments, feedback I get is positive. And then on a Friday night at 2 a.m., you know, I guess a Saturday morning at 2 a.m., no telling how many cases of Budweiser, somebody leaves a comment with some vulgar, you know, and y'all usually see it because I delete those comments, but it'll say something so vulgar that, you know, I can't leave it on there. So, you know, but you just have to try not to let that stuff get to you same thing in business and understand that it's true you can't please everyone and I, I thought about doing this you know I wanted to look up uh, I meant to do it for this video but the Google reviews for my local Chick-fil-a restaurant because you know Chick-fil-a is they they do stuff so excellent they've got such a great system and they're able to put hundreds and hundreds of people through there and and I just I can almost bet you without even looking there's some people that go in there and leave them a one-star review you know it might be they smile too much they, they they come across fake they're so happy the food was served to me too fast you know what what are people make up stuff to complain about and you just understand man chick-fil-a can't make everybody happy I can't either that's part of the business thanks